Ready Got for this it. One? Okay. Okay. Welcome to Peaceful Montessori Homeschooling. This is Jonathan and Adriana Prescott, and we are going to talk about the key points in children's peer socialization. Socialization, yes. Uh, the, one of the things in, in homeschooling that uh, people object to, and it's like, oh, well, you're going to homeschool your, ch your kids? Well, how are they going to learn to socialize? And so my, my question is, if they're in regular public school, how do they learn to socialize anyway? Who is the person responsible for teaching children socialization? Who would you think the person is, Adriana? Oh my gosh, it's mostly the peers, right? Because they're around them all the time. And then they pick up whatever the, the figure of authority is as well. Right, so, so basically you have people who don't know how to socialize, yes. trying to learn how to socialize. Together. From together, <laughs> who don't know how to socialize. And there's a person in charge who's not going to teach them how to socialize. So basically <laughs> it's, it's like Lord of the Flies, you know. That's correct. Anyway. Uh, which, which is why they have all these issues. That's right. And, and sometimes parents pull their children off of the school system because of these issues. Do you think that the average parent actually is paying attention at all with how children are socialized? Not at all. And what we have, and we're going to address that on this as well. Okay. So, what what are things that that children need to learn? And obviously, they need to know how to socialize with others, regardless of any you know age and so basically any age group um, they need to also learn how to choose friends well okay. let, let's do, let's do it diff, let's do it the opposite way okay let's teach them let, let's let's mention what the kids don't know they don't know peer-to-peer -peer socialization skills they don't know how to build relationships That's right. I mean they don't know how to maintain friendships they don't know how to stick up for friends uh, they don't know. They don't know how to keep their friends. They don't know how to keep their friends. They they these are things that as as a growing human, mm -hmm. these are learned behaviors how to socialize, right? These are things they don't know. And it, and and, it, and an inexperienced child would not be able to figure it out as anyway. That's right. In other words, a parent might dismiss a kid having a problem by saying, "Just go figure it out on your own." And this is why a lot of those kids, as they become adults, they become awkward when socializing. You know, because they're all of a sudden they're in a working environment, and they feel awkward. How do they How do they know what's a good What's a good friend, and what's a bad friend? You know, how do they know what's exactly? I mean, it's it's kind of a misnomer, a bad friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do how do they? Yeah, can... but that bad friend could be cool, or have something in common, right? How many times they're like in the same club and they have those same interests, but they can be a real jerk. Well, absolutely. And how do you handle a jerk? Yeah. Who who does the kid go to, to learn how to handle a jerk? Mm -hmm. Well, they can't. What are the where do they go to other other peers? Well, the first exposure is us as their parents. So, but if we screw that up, sure, then they 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 can only follow other other people's cues, and mostly it's gonna end up being the peers. Do you see a lot of parents? I mean, uh, you're you're more involved in the homeschooling community here. Uh, do you and and they're homeschooled. They're mm -hmm. a homeschool community, and you're you're dealing with these people on almost a daily basis. Um, how good do you th that these people are at uh, observing and and teaching their children how to socialize okay from what i've seen personally i think that a lot of times they they put their guard down because they see there's going to be a big difference from public school kids which there is yeah but it doesn't mean that they're actually engaging or teaching them how to socialize so there's things that are being missed as well. Sure. Okay. And um, because they, they put their guard down, you know, a lot of times parents are actually kind of get busy socialized with each other instead of observing how their kids are doing with the other children. So so basically the, the kids, I mean the parents, are actually more interested in socializing with other parents. Yeah. And what happens is um, some kids... Or some kids that are older siblings of other kids 
that might be a little bit more bossy. They, they kind of pick up on some things that probably their parent is bossy too. So if the thing is they end up becoming bossy to other children and other children don't want to put up with that. Well, that's really, that's really the next point yeah. is they, children, as they're growing, uh, uh, they identify with the successful models that are around them, mm -hmm. okay? And successful doesn't necessarily mean good, Yeah. all right? Somebody who is an authoritarian, if he get, gets his way all the time, like a, a, authorita mm -hmm. a, a very uh, um, authoritarian father or mother, um, they get their way all the time. So mm -hmm. when the, the child does the same type of, uh, well, that's, that's successful. So uh, let me use that with, with the people under me, mm -hmm. my, my younger sister, younger kids in the playground, Correct. that sort of thing, that they, they will mimic the behavior of what is successful to them. Correct. Okay. And see, that's, that can be the problem. Yeah, they want to they wanna make sure their way is carried on, and so they do whatever they, they, they can to, to make sure they play the game they want to play or whatever. Right. Now, the thing is, is we all want our children to make good decisions and make mm -hmm. good friends, and we want them to have good relationships, mm -hmm. not just as children, but as they grow up and as even as adults, we want them to flourish into having good, solid relationships, good marriages even. Correct. There's a, there's a lot of things that happen also that... Um, I've seen a lot of a lot of parents teach the kids to be, to be friendly to everyone. You should be friends with everyone, and so I see these these little kids that are trying to be these social butterflies, and they're being friendly to everyone, but in a way they're kind of robbing them of bonding with one or two other kids at a more personal level. It's like they're like they're being friends with everybody, but then they're no best friends of one or two particular kids. That's one of the things that that our daughter kind of complained about a lot is. A lot of them are like trying to be friendly to, to everyone, but she's trying to ask, she's trying to connect with, with some of them and trying to ask more personal questions like what, what kind of books do you like to read? You know, trying to kind of find a genuine interest in, in and in a, at a more personal level. But every, all the kids were kind of glossing it over. It's like they didn't understand. Right. They're just wanting to play a game. They don't really want to be a close friend or whatever. Yeah, that's that could be a, a problem too. Mm -hmm. uh, their their other problem is is when you say be friendly to everyone, you mean even the people who are mean to me. Exactly. And so this is one of the mm -hmm. things that that we picked up on uh, earlier, is the fact that um, uh, Annabelle had a situation where uh, there's these two girls uh, in her in her taekwondo class, and. Uh, they're yet much younger. They're much younger, mm -hmm. and uh, Annabelle, Annabelle had your phone, yes. and she was playing a, a game on on your phone, mm -hmm. and the other girls wanted to play too. Well, she didn't want to give your phone to them, but mm -hmm. she felt like she had to because that's being nice. Exactly, and she she's a kind of person who doesn't want to. She understands that the little kids don't know any better. Right. And she tries to be a good role model to them and doesn't want to hurt their feelings. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's kind of been been, been the problem mm -hmm. is that she will basically self-sacrifice. And so we, we picked up on that mm -hmm. and we, we told her, I says, look, you know, they're taking advantage of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there's certain rules that we have to follow when, when we're dealing with other people's property. Correct. And so we had to give her a little bit of uh, guidelines. guidelines about that, but also saying it's okay to say no. Exactly. It's okay to say no. I don't, I don't want to play with you right now, and I, I like to sit quietly and read my book. Right. Kind of set, trying to set the boundary so that kids can, can give her the space that she wants. Exactly, and and she can actually say to them, you know, I I don't think it's okay to play with my mother's phone, mm -hmm. uh, but I can ask. Correct. Right, and that's that's not like it's not telling them to go away. Uh -huh. Okay, it's just that. So the point that we just we just made is that as parents we need to be observant all the time on yes. how 
the, the kids are socialized. And also be observant on the cues that we get. Like if we see our daughter kind of like a little sad or not her normal self, or we're right we're right there to say what what happened. That something happened when you were at the park or at the event, um, and so and she she tell us, and that's how we find out the the issues that happen. Parents have to observe how their children interact with with others. Mm -hmm. They need to pay attention. They need to analyze the, the what they're seeing, okay? And they need to say, um, you know, teach their kids what what is a good person, what is a bad person, how to choose friends. Um, teach them uh, teach them about virtue virtuous virtues and how to choose a friend that has virtues. And and so mm -hmm. the, it's one thing to say we have to teach them this. Okay, but what it, that also entails, we have to model this behavior. Yes, you just cover the next thing. We need to be good guides and good role, role models on how to socialize. So, the child's first friend is the parent. Correct. Okay, they are the, like I said, they follow successful models. And so, the successful models that they should follow is how you and the, and the parent, I mean, how the, uh, you and the and your child interact. Correct. So it's important how you treat your child, and it's important how you treat others because your child will pick up on that. And now that uh, when we say treat your ch children like a, a friend, you're modeling a, a friendship behavior. But that doesn't mean to undermine a parental authority, like some people might object to. You know, if they're hearing this, they might say, well, I'm not going to be a friend to my kids. Exactly. Because then they'll all lose authority. When we say friends, that means like bond in a meaningful relationship. Right. That's you're, what we mean. You're, you're, you're modeling the, the meaningful relationship mm -hmm. that you want them to model to others. Correct. Okay? You're teaching them how to have genuine, positive relationships with others. Correct. Okay? Now... Also, you will you will have to come across how to deal with relationships that don't work with people. Yeah. Okay, because they'll run into uh, you know people that they cannot be friends with. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you have to know why. Exactly. You have to know what the dynamics are. You have to watch. You have to observe. You mm -hmm. have to be ready because you should know you yourself as a parent have to, have to know how to have a proper relationship with your spouse. That's correct. Okay? You have to know how to have a proper relationship with others yourself. Mm -hmm. How are you going to model it if you don't know these things? Correct. And so that's through, like our, our previous podcast about self-knowledge. That's right. You need to really be be 100% in, into this, and you have to sort your, your, your trauma. Because if you, mm -hmm. if you don't know, the kids will, the, your children will learn how to socialize from their peers yes. who don't know how to socialize. So if you're if you consider yourself a shy person or someone who's socially awkward, then you you need to really work on that because, uh, like you are the guide to your children. That you are the 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 mirror. No, the mirror that they're going to, um, what's that called? The the mirroring. They're going to pick up the same things that you do. Yes. So, now. I know we kind of talked about this a little bit. So, if parents are not cognizant of the importance of teaching children socialization, then the children will struggle with it, obviously. And some of the consequences, and we already mentioned some of these, is they're going to be bullied and they're going to have problems standing up for themselves. Yes. So you, you need to they need to know how to address that, how to choose their friends wisely, and things of course. like that. It's like a, a, it's like um, one of uh, uh, one of Annabelle's friends is is a very good friend. They they play Minecraft together, mm -hmm. okay. And he uh, uh, there was a something on the on the playground, and um, some other kids wanted to charge money for. For using something for, in the playground. For using a, this this rope swing, okay. And so it's like they they just came from out of out of nowhere and wanted to charge money to to do, get on the rope swing. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like and the this one kid, this uh, Annabelle's friend, they weren't sure what to do. 
until I until opened. you stepped in I, and, I, and 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 told them, you know, if you what did I you said, tell them? I, I actually said I wasn't I was indignant of it, but I, I also recognized that it was just a kid. Right. They don't know any better, and they're picking up the stuff from somewhere. So I I said that's not that's not right. And then um, some other older kid came over and said, "What told told this kid? What are you doing? Don't do that." And I said, and then I, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna teach him something. I said, you know what? If you need money, you can make something like a craft or whatever, because those sell really well. You know, try try an art or a craft and try sell, selling those. People will buy them. That's a good way to make money. That's right. You don't have to extort money from and from little kids. <laughs> no, and you know what happened? Which was like, wow. And it was like an eureka moment for the kid. His eyes lit up. Like no Did one it? has told. Yeah, like no one has told him that before. And he's like, he's like, I know what to make. He said that. Yes. Oh wow. So I, I didn't hear that part of the story. I know. It was like I was I was amazed myself. Sometimes I I I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> but it it really it was something that that kid had never received. How many how many how many adults would actually say, "Don't do that. That's not right. You shouldn't be doing it." Probably get a whole lesson on how bad yes. he behaved or did something. Right. That's but true. I gave him an idea. But but the thing about it is 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 with Annabelle's friend, he was there. He's listening to yeah. you, and then it, it emboldened him. Yes. It emboldened him to think, yeah, I can stand up, because right. he, because he felt he felt a little anxiety too about how they were treating Annabelle. He was he got all what's it called huff and puff and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it was so cute seeing a little boy, you know, try to. Get all tough and everything. <laughs> yes, but but uh, yeah, it's uh, but but you were right there, and and you you were able to take care of things. Yeah, and right? you don't have to be mean to children. You don't have to be, you know, unpleasant. You don't have to meet uh, and, and be aggression th with more aggression and demean them. Yeah, you know those those negative things. But anyway. uh, but anyway, the the thing is, and then we talked to Annabelle. Mm -hmm. uh, and we told her, as those those kids weren't doing the right thing, mm -hmm. okay. And you do have permission, you do have permission to stand up to your for yourself, Correct. because you have. Uh, we told her, says you have backup. Mm -hmm. You have me, and you uh, you have mommy, and then you have me, okay. And we will we will stand behind you uh, at any time that you need us. And you know what else? Because she, when I told you later that this boy was starting to get all, you know, wanting to stand up for for her. Yeah. She didn't. She didn't see that part, because she was she was focusing on the other stuff. But when I when I brought it brought to light that her friend was getting was getting uh, was reacting and wanting to defend her. Defend her. She was like, oh, and I have friends too that'll stand yes. up for me. Yes, she does. And I said, yes, you, you bet, you do. All your friends really adore you. That's right. You know? And that's, that's the important thing about, about knowing who your good friends are. Correct. And, and also, at a certain point, children need to start being choosy with their friends. Correct. It's, it's, you know, you don't have to, ha you can only maintain a certain number of friends if you want to keep it, that quality relationships going. Right. And even that's even true with adult relationships. Yes. There's only a certain amount of friends that you can maintain. Correct. Um, and yeah, I know on Facebook you can have like 5,000 friends. I sometimes wonder about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway. And the, and the thing is, is there's no way that a, a one person can do that. We're, we're just not capable of maintaining no. that number of friendships. No. Uh, we, can, we can maintain... About ten to twenty friends Correct. in in reality. Yeah. Um, but uh, but even then, it's like you, uh, it's like we had a com Annabelle and I had conversation about what a, a a BFF is. Yeah. Okay. And and so, uh, and this was a very important thing because she mentioned it, and so instead of just glossing over BFF, you know, that's kind of a, a kind of a standard term best friends forever mm -hmm. I, I said i said what does that mean mm -hmm. she goes well 
I said, she goes, well, it just means it's a really good friend. It doesn't necessarily mean forever. I said, well, it says in the, is in the name forever, best friends forever. Mm -hmm. How do you know that that's forever? And so that was a very good, good conversation. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, Annabelle, the, in the beginning of wisdom is to call things by their proper names. Okay. I'll tell you what I said, Annabelle, I had, I've had one friend in my lifetime that I would say is best friends forever. Mm -hmm. Okay. In fact, uh, his firstborn son was named after me, mm -hmm. and I've had this friend for 40 years. That's very special. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is a best friend forever. Correct. Okay? Only a few people are lucky enough to have a, a BFF. Correct. Now, you can have best friends. You can have very good friends. You mm -hmm. can have close friends. Yeah. Friends that are like brothers and sisters. But this term, best friends forever... If, if we always call it that, and we always say forever, and we don't mean forever, then it really kind of loses its meaning. Yeah. And so that was a very positive conversation. Mm -hmm. And and I think that that really uh, made her think about, you know, some of the language being used for friendships and stuff. Correct. Not to use it so lightly. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so so these are, these are the opportunities you have as a parent to have these conversations and to and to get to know your children and get to model their their um yeah and that's what's the next thing of the consequence that if you're not cognizant of of teaching children socialization is a parent will end up not knowing their child because a lot of information is revealed in this learning process and and will serve as as opportunities for parent and child to bond of course i mean my parents i mean i i didn't I got to the point where I felt, and I'm sure this is true for a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, especially with high ACE scores, yes. adverse childhood experience. Mm -hmm. And that's a good study to look up, uh, yep. adver adverse childhood experience study. Uh, they can look it up at the uh, Centers for Disease Control, uh, Kaiser Permanente. It's a very, very am uh, amazing study. Take the test. There's 10 questions. Find out what your ACE score is. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is people with, with moderate to high ACE scores – they will say, my parents don't didn't know me. Exactly. Okay? Mm -hmm. They didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, you know, I, lear I learned everything I, I learned from my, my peers. Yes, and that's the thing I was going to mention next. If, they don't bond, if parent and child don't bond, then the next in line are the peers. They will bond with their peers instead. And as a result, they will follow the expectations and values of their peers. Mm-hmm. And that's what co what causes a lot of conflicts between parent and child because the parent, I mean, the child wants to do what their peers are doing, and it's not in line with what the what the family wants to do. Well, yeah, and then the fa the family, uh, the the mother or father will say, you know, my child is not like that. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You don't even know exactly. what your child is like because you're not involved. You're, yeah, you're feeding them, you're clothing them, you're ta doing the, mm -hmm. the school thing, but do you really know them? This is why it's important to be that model of friend, okay? Model that behavior of friendship so they know what a friend is. Yes, you observe your, you observe your children, see who your children are, talk, are talking to and who they're trying to befriend. Correct. You want to be a, a part of every aspect of your child. Absolutely. You don't want to be absent or uninformed or whatever. But anyway, those were the key points in, in children's peer socialization. Should we give them our Yes, our site? if you if you mm -hmm. want to know more, you can you can find us on Facebook, Peaceful Montessori Homeschooling. Uh, just uh, go on, sign up, and uh, you can read some of our stuff. We we have a, a website, a Peaceful Montessori Homeschooling. And also YouTube page of the same name. Uh, please feel subscribe. Free, please <laughs> subscribe. Feel free to look at our stuff and give us uh, feedback. Give us feedback. We're still growing. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.